morning, Mount Zion, and welcome to worship. I want to remind us that on September 5th, at our 10.30 a.m. worship service, we will be regathering in person indoors. We will be asking that all persons come mask, but if you show up without a mask, we will have one available for you. We will be practicing social distancing and we will continue to follow the CDC protocols. We look forward to seeing you on September 5th. Our theme for the month of September, the quest, the journey home after COVID, and we will be asking you to share some of your testimonies of how God has brought you through. I'm excited to announce this morning that as of the first Sunday in September, we will be welcoming Nicole Smith as our intern from Wesley Theological Seminary. As some of you know, I served as professor of preaching and worship at Wesley for a number of years. Um, in fact, I think my last year there was the year 2016 that I came to um, Mount Zion. I also served uh, as a facilitator for Wesley's practice and mission and ministry program, which is their internship program. I have had interns since my very first church, um, Mount Tabor in Crownsville, Maryland, and in every church that I've served, I have had an intern. So I am excited that Nicole is joining us for the Harwood Mount Zion Charge. Her responsibilities, her areas of interest right now revolve around evangelism. And she will help us and we will help her. It will be an, a learning experience for all of us. So I invite you, some of you know Nicole, some of you are related to Nicole. I invite you to welcome her when you see her and she will be joining us on September 5th. As always, I wanna say thank you to Brian Jenkins and Jason Belt for the work that they do every single week to make sure that worship is recorded, edited and uploaded so that we can participate in worship. Let's prepare for worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, won't you magnify the Lord with me? Let us exalt God's name together. For when we seek God, God will answer us. We worship our great and glorious God. Amen. As we prepare for prayer, I am praying for all those who are experiencing grief in this moment. I am praying for those who have been traveling. I'm praying for those impacted by COVID-19, particularly this Delta variant. And I'm praying for all of us that the Lord might continue to surround us with the Lord's care. Let's pray. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for our earthly families and for those who journey alone, that we might be a church that is established on the principle of love and acceptance. Help us, we pray, to be a strength for all those that we encounter. Help our church to be an example of what it means to love and serve our neighbors, particularly the poor, the hungry, and the oppressed. We remember all those in this moment who are experiencing grief. We, re we remember all of those whose bodies are racked with pain. We remember those even in this hour who are in the hospital on a ventilator dealing with COVID-19. We lift up all those who are experiencing fear in this moment. And God, we ask that you help us serve as agents of healing through the pain, through the distrust, through the upheaval. May we be empowered to make our community so grounded in your love that people look at us and say, that's what it means to be a Christian. 
Fill us with your spirit as a people of faith that we might serve you all of our days and look forward to your heavenly feast of joy and love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our scripture today, Ephesians 4, 25 to 5-2. Ephesians 4, 25 to 5-2. So then, putting away all falsehood, let us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger and don't make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Pray with me as we consider the topic encouraging one another with truth. Encouraging one another with truth. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the ways in which your word guides and directs us. Now, as we encounter your word as your beloved children, remind us who you've called us to be and how you've called us to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember the old children's verse, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I think the older we become, the more we realize that words do hurt. Hurtful words coupled with hurtful actions are much more painful than sticks and stones. The hurt, the sting of hurtful words can remain with us for years. As people in Christ. We're called to encourage one another with our words and with our actions. And we're often not sure how to do this. In Ephesians 4, 25 to 5, 2, the writer instructs believers in how to encourage others through words and actions. In these verses, we learn six ways to encourage others. We encourage others by speaking the truth in love. The first way we can encourage one another is by removing falsehood and speaking the truth in love. Now, this is one coin with two sides. One side states we have to stop lying to each other, while the other side says we have to speak the truth in a loving manner. You know, my mother used to always say this. You can cuss somebody out in the right way with the right words and they will thank you for it. There's something about our words and the way we use them that we as Christians need to be mindful of. We're not saying you avoid conflict and you never confront a person, but you confront in love. You um, work as the, um, as the text said, to build one another up as there is need. Uh, so often we say things and we do things, even if they're true, that are hurtful to other people and are best left unsaid. Loving relationships mean that we have to put ourselves in a place where we can be hurt for another's welfare. But we, the church, are not called 
to spew hurtful words and engage in hurtful actions because God has called us to an attitude of love. We encourage others by not allowing our anger to become sin. That is, we don't allow our anger to cause us to lash out at others and, we, and be detrimental and try to destroy them. Biblical anger always involves a righteous reaction to sinfulness. It's always seasoned with love and redemption. Sinful anger wants to hurt and get revenge. And, and the text is inviting us to live in such a way that our anger doesn't do damage to our relationships. The text says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. We encourage one another by how we work in unity in the church. The writer expresses a third manner in which we can encourage other people, and that is through sharing the goods that we've gained through hard work. In verse 28, we're admonished not to steal, but to work hard in order to have something to share with those who are in need. Sometimes the best thing I can do for someone is supply a material need. For it's been said that it's hard for me to hear about a God who loves me when my stomach is rumbling because I'm hungry. Providing food and clothes or paying a medical bill can build other people up in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. The only way we can meet such a need is to be in a position to do so financially and spiritually. So the text invites us to move from the, uh, the perspective of always taking and align our lives in such a manner that we can also give. We encourage others by speaking positive words. Verse 29 is the verse that seems to tower over the rest of the passage. Words aren't neutral. The words we say are either positive, which means they build up other people, or they're negative, which means they're tear, they tear down other people. And all of us know the difference. We sometimes act like we don't so that we can say and do what we want regardless of the consequences, but we know how we feel when words are spoken to us in a negative manner. Evaluating our words as to whether they're positive or negative is one of the most difficult things for us to do. But God calls us to be mindful of the way that other people hear and receive what we say. The most encouraging thing we can do for others, one of the ways that we speak the truth in love is that we use our words to build up rather than tear down. We encourage others by forgiving them. Forgiveness means not taking into account or keeping um, a list of the wrongs that we've suffered. Forgiveness also involves treating the one who sinned against us as though he or she hasn't done nothing to us. We can forgive others even if they don't ask for our forgiveness, but full reconciliation takes place only when people admit their wrongs and ask for our forgiveness. Think of the times in your life when you had to ask for forgiveness. Can you remember how encouraging it was when you received forgiveness? So God calls us to be tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And the final exhortation from the writer reminds us that we encourage each other by walking in love. Our whole attitude and demeanor should be characterized by love. Such a character trait involves putting others before ourselves, wanting and working for the best for and in others, being patient and kind and hoping and believing in others. It means giving each other the benefit of the doubt 
It means not jumping to conclusions, but trying to get to the heart of the matter. Love is an action. It's not just soapy sentimentality. Love is the most powerful force on the universe and actually the one force that remains through all eternity. Scripture says God is love. And so when we walk in love, we are walking in Christ. These scriptures have given us some practical instruction into exactly how we can encourage others. And the hard part for us is applying what we know is right. God is calling us in this moment where so much is divided. There are so many um, attitudes that are divisive and dismissive. God's calling the church to speak the truth in love by encouraging and lifting one another up. God's calling us to temper our words. God's calling us to rein in our anger and our angst and begin to look to God as the author and finisher of our faith. We can be better if we choose to be better. And one of the first ways is that we began to control our tongue. So I invite us in the week coming up to be mindful of our words. Think about what we say and how we say it. Think about how often our mean-spirited words are followed up with mean-spirited action. And then allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us so that we can walk in God's way. Amen. If you are struggling to be encouraged and you haven't placed your faith and trust in Jesus, I invite you to do that today. For in Jesus, we have the ability to temper our words and our actions. If you are without a church home and you'd like to unite, with Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Laurel, we invite you to unite yourself with this body of believers. We're not perfect, but we are striving to live as a church committed to love. And there is a place and a work here for you. If you are listening and you would like prayer, please drop us a note in the comments and we will pray for you. If you're listening and you have a need, drop us a comment in the notes and we'll reach out to you. If you have made a decision for Christ, let us know. And if you'd like to unite with this body of believers, tell us in the comments and our ministry team will reach out to you. God loves you and so do we. And we're committed to encouraging one another by speaking the truth in love. Let's prepare our hearts for the benediction. Go forth and live as Christ in the world. Speak and live with integrity and with grace as you journey through this new week. Temper your words. Be mindful of your words. Knowing that your God will be with you every step of the way and lead you to a victorious life. Amen. Mm -hmm.